Okay, hi. So uh, today I am enlisting your help in trashing my TBR. So this video concept was first created by Emma at Drinking By My Shelf. Um, I uh, recently said in one of my videos, like, I have my TBR is like, a, too, it's too much. Um, and Rosie at Rosie Cockshut suggested I do this video. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So Emma's rules are intense. She's like, absolutely no one can say anything good about a single one of these books. I do not feel that strongly. You could tell me the book is great, um, but I would prefer you tell me it's absolute shit if it is. I try to pick books that are like more popular, so hopefully you will have read at least a few of them and can contribute to the conversation. I have two different lists. One of them is, which is the first one I'm going to be going through, is books that are by authors I have never read from before, although some of these I have started and put down. And then some of them are, are books that are authors I've read from before, but obviously different books. So for the, the first list of authors I have never read from before, I would also like to know, is this even the right place to start with them? Because I just feel like you can get off to a bad relationship start with an author if you choose to go with the wrong book first, um, which is actually what I think I did with at least one of the books on the list from authors I've read. So this one is a Man Booker Prize shortlisted history of wolves. I started this one and DNF'd it part of the way through um, a few years ago. And I want to say it was like culty vibes and in Minnesota or in like a cold place. I don't really remember. I don't really remember why I DNF'd it. I think I was probably just a little bored, but should, should I read this? Is it worth it? Questions. Let's actually start with the ones I DNF'd. So next one, Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders. So I had been hearing so much hype about this, this audiobook um, because it is like a multicast kind of, it's told as like a chorus. Um, and I tried it and I detested the audiobook. I got very, I don't know, a few hours in and I was like, I have no idea what's happening right now. Uh, since then I've come to learn that I am, have the unpopular opinion of not liking full cast audiobooks. I much prefer if one singular person narrates or if it's like a switching back and forth book that one person narrates each perspective. Um, so is this worth the hype or is this a gimmick? Because that is what I kind of am concerned by, that the concept of this book is more of a gimmick than actually being interesting and profound and like breaking the mold of what, what it means to be a book. Okay, and then here we have The Red Tent. So conceptually, this book sounds really interesting. Um, I think it was popular, when did this come out? Like. This book is yellowing on the pages. 1997, um, so uh, came out and was a New York Times bestseller, probably in a time era where I wasn't really, I was learning how to read. Um, honestly, it's the cover. Like the cover does nothing for me. So tell me, is the cover equivalent to what's inside? Is it trash or should I read this book? Okay, next one is uh, China Mieville's Perdido Street Station. So I had a friend who gave me a list of books that she had recommended um, kind of, it's been a while, I've owned this for a while, kind of before I like learned about BookTube um, and knew I could get like book recommendations or find out about books from like the internet <laughs> and people on the internet. Um, and I don't think I would have ever picked this up on my own, but she said the world building was really cool. But I have now owned this book for years um, and have never really had much of an interest in picking it up. So you tell me. I feel like I'm like a trying to be like a not like other girls or like not like other people's um, sort of thing. But like I end up 
hating a lot of like things that say national bestseller on the top, on the like the cover. Um, and these next two are national bestsellers. So the Yellow Birds. This um, takes place in Iran, Iraq, dur Iraq during I think the Iraq war when, you know, America did that like fun invasion, um, in, uh, two thousands. So I've started this book and I liked the writing, but I don't know, something about the perspective. I just don't know. Okay. Next one this I got from a person, like a recommendation from a person in real life who I don't even know if we have similar reading tastes. So this is Wolf in White Van um, by John Darnielle, who is a musician in a band. I don't know which band. I'll pop it up on the screen. And um, I, I don't know. I don't know. No, I know nothing. I just... I bought it because someone suggested it, and then I was like, why am I taking recommendations from people that I don't know if I like their reading tastes? But now I own it, and I'm like, well, I should give it a shot, and like, you see, this is, this is why we're here now. I don't know if anyone will have read this one, but I have, this is the only YA, I believe, left on my shelves, and I just like haven't gotten rid of it, and I think part of it's the cover, and it's called Tender Morsels, um, and it seems really dark, and I just, I don't know, I keep, like, I have a lot of YA, I shouldn't say I have a lot, I have some YA on my, like, TBR that I don't physically own. And I go back and forth on if I'll ever even pick them up because I never end up, like, truly enjoying the YA that I read. Um, so for the past, like, two years, I haven't really read any, but then I still have this one on my shelves, and it's a retelling of some sort... I don't know. I don't know. Do, like, do I just give it up? Like, is YA not for me? Like, is there better YA for me out there? Probably. I'm, like, kind of convincing myself just to get rid of this, but I'll let you guys answer. My Absolute Darling by Gabrielle Talent. This I started as an audiobook and just didn't really like the audiobook. It takes place in um, Northern California, which I'm a sucker for things that take place in California because, um you know, I grew up there. Uh, but like, I don't know if it was culty, maybe I, I truly have no idea what this is about. But the, the protagonist, like child's name is Turtle. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That decision kind of like, uh, made me decide to put the book down for a little bit. Uh, sometimes I think, I don't know, naming, naming conventions and like, non fantasy things can get to me sometimes. Uh, it's it's weird. I'm not sure. Anyway, another one. I don't want to make this too long. Okay, this one is a recent book that was getting a lot of hype, maybe in 2021. You know I never read up front, like, front list. Let's see. Yeah, 2021. The Lost Apothecary. I got it in, like, a little free library, free little library, whatever, um, whichever one it is, and, uh, and then I'm, and then I brought it home, and then I looked at reviews, and I was like, hmm, although it might be a fun audiobook, but then I'm like, but I have tons of things I could read, so do I want to read this one? Although it has a nice cover. I could always return it to a free little library. Little free library? It actually has, like, a stamp in it that said it went through a li one of those libraries. Um, hold. Little free library. I'll, I still won't remember that. <laughs> okay, Lost Apothecary. Okay, the next one I'm going to read, but is it worth reading the whole series? And that is like Clan of the Cave Bear. So my mom like read these when I was growing up and I remember she was so annoyed that like the last books were like never coming out. And then I remember her being disappointed by how they ended. And I think that they're mainly a romance. I don't know. I thought um, the, like, time era was interesting. Um, I know that the author did a lot of research into the, the time era she was writing in. But I have questions on if it's worth continuing the series since I own, I think, like, 
four other books in it or should I just read this one or should I just not read them? I mean, I'm probably going to read them, but like set my expectations. Now the next four are authors I have read from before. So the first one is uh, March by Geraldine Brooks. So I just need to make a decision on if I'm going to read more Geraldine Brooks because I read Year of Wonders years ago and when I was getting back into reading post college and really enjoyed it. And then I don't know, I've DNF'd people of the book, um, Jacob's Ladder, Jacob something, I got like a page into, and, um, I, you know, everyone has a kind of opinion about this, but for me, there's something about, like, white authors choosing to write, um, BIPOC narratives, um, but still, like, I don't know. I don't know how to formulate my thoughts over that. Over that, Like, I, I just, I'd rather read narratives by, the, the, that narrative by a BIPOC author instead of reading it through, like, a white author's lens. Um, I, I already have my own white lens I'm reading through, so I, I don't need, like, a double white lens of that. I don't know. Um, but so so I didn't I chose not to read one of her other books because of that and then I just I'm like I've DNF'd one I got a few pages into one and it turned me off like do I read March at this point this is yeah I guess it won the Pulitzer Prize I think that this is a retelling of something I don't know but do I I don't know a lot of these are like winners of awards. Like this one was a Pulitzer Prize winner. This one was the National Book Award winner. Uh, my next one up won the Booker as well. Yeah, so we got the Pulitzer. This one's the National Book Award. And then we have a Booker winner. Um, so do I get along with award winners? Debatable. All the Pretty Horses by Cormac McCarthy. I have read The Road by him. I read that when I was in high school, and I just question if I even want to participate in what Cormac McCarthy does. Like, I don't know. I just get the sense that I will, like, dislike his works, um, and I, I don't think I can use The Road as a good, like, waypoint because I was, like, 16 or 17 when I read it, and I am absolutely not the same reader that that I was as a teenager with my non-developed frontal lobe. So, is All the Pretty Horses worth it? Is, that, like, that a good place to start? Because I think I've owned a few more of his books, and I've just kind of, like, gotten rid of them, and this is the <laughs> unread, and this is the last one standing, so... Does, is it standing on his last leg? Do I get rid of it? Questions. Okay. Now the uh, the Booker winner. Hist a Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. So I feel like I brought this up in a few videos. Um, and the only person that ever tells me it's worth reading is Scott, <laughs> Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. So I need not someone not Scott to <laughs> comment on if I should read this or not. Um, because I really did not like uh, Marlon James's other book, Black Leopard, Red Wolf. And the and truly a lot of it was the writing style and being unable to put myself into the writing style. And this is like thick, like 600, yeah, over 600 pages. The pages are thin. Like I'm terrified of this book. Um, I, I was already, and then I was more terrified after I read all of Black Leopard, Red Wolf, which is about the same size and disliked it. So yeah, yeah, tell me. The next one is Eileen by Otessa Moshbeg. So I started this on audio recently and wasn't a huge fan. And I don't know, me and Otessa Moshbeg, like I really loved my year of rest and relaxation. I thought it was great. I thought the ending like missed for me a little bit, but overall I just think it was a great read. I read McGlue, which is her novella, and I was kind of so-so about it. And now I started Eileen and I was like, do I care about this perspective? Um, there's, I don't know, She's she's come up with a few things lately that I've kind of missed and I'm like, Maybe she was like a one-hit wonder author for me, 
But um, yeah, tell me if I should read Eileen or not. Those were all the books. Leave your comments down below. I'm very curious. Help me reduce my TBR because it is too much right now. It's actually too much. Um, it's like a, over 170 books physically. Um, and then my um, non-physical TBR is uh, probably like 800. I don't know. I'll put a number up. Uh, so it's a little, it's a little much. Um, so I'd appreciate your help because you, you know, you guys help introduce books to my health TBR. So like help me remove some. So yeah, that's all I got. I'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.